My name is Jeffrey Kahn, and I'm the host of Digital Oil & Gas, the podcast that looks at the impact of digital technology on the oil and gas industry. If you want to discuss this week's topic further, or just stay in touch, you can always reach me at Jeffrey Kahn on Twitter or at JeffreyCann.com. This podcast is entitled, Cyber Worries in Oil and Gas. You don't need to take in Disney's latest Star Wars installments to see robots battling robots. Just pay a visit to the cyber desk of an energy company, if you can find it. Weaponizing Digital Digital technologies are very democratic. Anyone can access them. All you need is a reasonably advanced smartphone from any of the big phone suppliers, an internet access, which is free in coffee shops and malls, and an account on a cloud service. Download some apps from the app stores, and you're in business. The apps are mostly free too, which tells you they're not costly to make. The computer coding languages must be pretty easy to learn, and the techniques for making the apps seductive and mildly addictive must also be widely shared. Much of this digital world is based on open source technologies, a kind of rocket fuel for propelling innovations forward. These same technologies are becoming more commonplace in the industrial world of energy manufacturing and distribution. The underlying chip technologies, protocols, standards, and architectures migrate easily between the industrial, consumer, and defense sectors. And they can be put to more nefarious usage, namely cyber activity. The same processes that are democratizing digital are also enabling a booming cyber criminality world. Make no mistake, that smartphone in your pocket doubles as a weapon for evil. A sticky and growing problem. In my view, there are several additional trends, besides democracy, that are helping enable cyber activity in the industrial world, and these trends show no signs of slowing down or reversing course. Networks. We have a growing reliance on wireless network connectivity, and we're about to roll out a whole new protocol, 5G. Much of the world still labors under 2G, an older and more vulnerable telecom standard. Wireless links can be compromised at source and during the transmission of data. Both links and transmissions can be hacked. Sensors. We are adding sensors of all stripes to many things, the so-called Internet of Things. These sensors generate lots of data, house software, and enable connectivity, creating a greater attack surface for cyber criminals to target. Interconnects. We are interconnecting our systems, which allows faster spread of viruses and criminal access. Response time to deal with a threat is shrinking. Computer viruses now spread much faster than human viruses. And staying on top of all the patches is an overwhelming job, with the result that many successful attacks target the unpatched kit. Interconnections are growing faster than our ability to keep abreast of the cyber risks that the interconnections create. Legacy Exposures We're now adding internet links to our legacy infrastructure. That legacy gear was never designed for such a hostile world, and lacks the ability to be patched or even monitored for cyber activity. The documentation from some old kit is still online, and sometimes the passwords are both hard-coded in the system and included in the documentation. Code Intensity We're adding code to things, and in extraordinary quantities, that are impossible to fully grasp. The Ford F-150, the world's most popular pickup truck, has more lines of code in it, 150 million, than Facebook, the Hadron Large Collider, the Space Shuttle, and the iPhone. All that code is potentially vulnerable to hacking. Innovations. And finally, we're going to unleash a brand new wave of innovation. Autonomous transportation, smart manufacturing, smart cities, digital farming, all of which will add to the opportunity for cyber criminality in ways we have yet to fully understand. Forward-thinking criminals are already preparing for this new and lucrative playground. The Economics of Cyber Unfortunately for business, cyber activity pays off, and handsomely too. In the U.S., some 4,000 ransomware attacks take place daily. The average ransom payment is now $13,000, although I suspect it's a lot higher than that, and cryptocurrency payments make it devilishly hard to recover any ransoms paid. The costs to the criminal organization are no doubt increasing, as organizations harden their operations offset by the lower costs of automating their own cyber activities, but the probability of getting caught and lenient punishments don't seem to deter the market. 
The U.S. Department of Homeland Security tries to keep tabs on cyber activity and believes that over 50% of all cyber attacks from 2015 to 2019 have been aimed at energy infrastructure, power, oil, and gas. This is surprising to me, as I would have thought the bulk would be aimed at financial institutions because that's where the money is. However, more and more cyber activity originates with state actors, who have interests in destabilizing entire economies for reasons other than purely theft of financial assets. For example, if Russian hackers can disrupt the reliability of the European electricity grid using cyber, it might strengthen the case for greater reliance on natural gas, a commodity Russia supplies in, in volume. And with that reliance, a vastly improved, longer-term strategic pipeline asset for influencing European politics. The most alarming development for cyber activity, whose aim appears to be sabotage or destruction of industrial plants. In 2018, Saudi Arabia experienced a worrisome attack at one of its petrochemical plants, where the goal of the attack was to trigger an explosion. The cyber activity took aim at a very widely deployed process control system from a global supplier of such technology, meaning that the other 18,000 installations of the same process controllers were suddenly vulnerable. An obscure, air-gapped device was, in fact, the weakest link. In any case, the costs to the victim are much higher than any ransom payments in terms of an urgent and unanticipated outlay to remediate the attack, an unwanted distraction from operations, a shutdown of operations to recover, the costs of brand damage, the potential for customer defection, and potential regulatory penalties. Experts from RigNet believe that the average cost to recover a successful attack in energy is over $17 million, more than five times the average. Media stories of high-profile cases involving consumer and financial data theft point to much higher sums. Finally, a reluctance by business to acknowledge that they have been successfully attacked impedes efforts to mobilize effective sector-wide response. Robot Wars The lightweight, human-centric tools of the past for managing cyber activity are simply no longer up to the task of managing and repelling the onslaught of attacks. With thousands of access points, sensors, equipment, networks, and industrial assets, each a potential cyber target, companies need all new tools to deal with the rising volume of activity. Leading companies approach this new problem by applying the latest digital tools, including artificial intelligence, machine learning, and robots, to cope with the cyber activity. The resulting struggle pits the human ingenuity, AI tools, and bots of the criminal sector against the trained technical teams, AI tools, and bots of industry. The clash is like a cat and mouse face-off taking place entirely in the ether, with the cat having to respond to every move by the mouse. Given the complexity of the environment, if your company is not already bringing digital tools to the combat, you're showing up with a butter knife to a firefight. What leading companies do differently. Leaders in oil and gas are embarking on a wave of digital transformation of the business. The reasons are largely economic. Modest percentage improvements in cost and productivity translate into enormous economic gains because of the scale of the industry. But the most sophisticated are also distinguished by their strategic response to the threats of cyber activity. The board role. Boards take an active interest in cyber issues, hold regular education sessions on cyber topics, and have quarterly briefings from security experts on cyber activity. Education Employee education programs incorporate cyber awareness training to highlight the perils of unprotected devices, phishing attacks, and spoofing. Some campaigns even include fake phishing attacks that help capture inattentive employees. Risk Management Risk review committees flag cyber risks alongside operational risks as high likelihood and high impact. That way, cyber defense gets some organizational attention. Encryption Encryption is on by default for everything, and I mean everything. Data, devices, sensors, and data flows. Since it's only a matter of time before some digital asset is compromised, better that they're at least encrypted. Hardening Particularly sensitive functions, such as encryption, are handled by hardware, which can force hackers to need physical access to carry out an effective attack. Hardware-based encryption also lessens the overhead burden on networks. Automation AI and bots actively monitor the digital environment to detect intrusions, isolate those intruders, repel attacks, and neutralize many cyber threats. Bots don't sleep, 
learn constantly, share openly, can monitor everything at once, and improve faster than humans. AI-backed monitoring is suddenly a mandatory. People. Cyber defense teams are world-class, fully equipped, and constantly trained and augmented with these industrial-grade tools. Organization. Cyber expertise is organizationally separate to bring independent to standards, testing, and monitoring of these digital assets. Services run a continuous program of penetration testing to detect weaknesses to be corrected. Finally, practices. Access to company digital assets and resources by third parties, suppliers, and contractors is time-boxed. Access to assets is often left open beyond the service window, creating a point of weakness. So to sum up, cyber worries are an increasing problem. But fortunately, the digital tools are at hand to help companies secure their perimeters and fend off the robots. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe to the show. You can find Digital Oil & Gas on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And please tell a friend about the show. If you have a minute, please leave a review and a rating on iTunes, as that helps others find the show along with other great content. You can follow Jeffrey on Twitter, at Jeffrey Can, or on LinkedIn. Also, look for Jeffrey's new book, entitled Bits, Bites, and Barrels, The Digital Transformation of Oil and Gas, on Amazon and other fine online bookshops. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digital Oil and Gas. The podcast returns next Wednesday, so tune in then.